he studied the relationship between how well a culture flourishes in terms of architecture, literature, music, agriculture, and so forth. The relationship between the flourishing of a culture and what sort of sexual restraints or lack thereof they had. It was 86 total. And what he discovered was really quite incredible. And, and basically, there is the, the more the, <clears throat> the more constrained, the more con, constrained you have, well, the more sexuality is constrained to be practiced within marriage, and even different kinds of marriage, like different cultures have different ideas of what that is. But the more it's just constrained within that, the more the culture flourishes, and the less it's constrained, the more it goes downhill. But he found there was a turning point, a tipping point. And I was really surprised at what that tipping point was. The tipping point is when sexual relations between people is fine outside of marriage, like for young people, for example. He called it prenuptial uh, intimacy. And when, pre well, I was shocked at that because when people say if, if sex goes downhill, if you get too wild in that area, it's cultural collapse. And so immediately in my head, I'm thinking, well, it's got to be, what is that? It's got to be really bad. Like we're talking pedophilia, sex with animals. What are we talking about here? So I was shocked to learn that it was that because our culture crossed that tipping point probably, that started in the mid-1960s. There, the you know when the actual tipping point and when becomes socially acceptable like across the board, that you can't pin that down to a day or even a particular year, but you can pin it down to within a ten year period. And for us, that really somewhere between mid nineteen seventies to mid nineteen eighties, it just became normal for let's say high school students to be sexually active. So what Kirk, happens Kirk, here? Is this on when guy a uh a priest or who, yeah. who is this unwin guy? Is he like, it sounds like he, he might be obviously a Christian cause he's, he's saying that premarital or prenuptial <laughs> sex is the downfall yeah. of society. Uh, tell me about this guy. Yeah. So I was wondering like, where's this guy coming from? He, he was extremely pedantic. His, his academics is impeccable. In fact, so impeccable that there's a professor at Princeton by the name of Robert P. George, who actually teaches unwin. And he says, no one since Unwin's time has matched Unwin in the degree of thoroughness he did in his study of these 86 civilizations. Unwin is still the leader. But what was his bias? Uh, it was pretty, as I read the book, I would say that if anything, like the way he talked about, say, Christianity, for example, was not at all, there was nothing positive about it, nothing. In fact, some of the ways he referred to it, I don't think he ever refers to Jesus uh, by name. Um, if anything, I, I, I sensed he was either an agnostic or an atheist, but let's just say an agnostic. You certainly couldn't tell. And if anything, he was, he didn't, he, there was no positive things about Christianity, nothing, nothing to suggest a bias there. And if anything, the way he referred to it, no Christian would refer to it that way. At least that was my my thing my uh but but there's one thing i should point out here anybody can write stuff about culture and what's going to happen the 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 key thing is is it valid is it does it actually happen and so what he found is that there's three markers there's when the tipping point is crossed three things happen within the next generation or so three remarkable changes in the culture number one the culture goes from believing in some sort of a God that presides over nature and stuff. We, in our culture, we would call that theism or Christianity is an example. Islam is another example. Judaism is another. Uh, and then some of the famous cultures in the past that achieved very high levels were Hellenistic Greece and the, uh, the Romans at a particular point. So they all had their deities in charge of stuff. When the tipping point is crossed, Belief in some sort of a ultimate deities that or deities that can would watch over nature and nature has to be that just goes that that collapses and we are seeing that in our culture where belief in the existence of God has just plummeted. Number two is that uh, rational thinking goes out the window and that has happened big time in our culture, like uh, logical rational thinking. In fact, in some quarters, if rational thinking and logic is uh, doesn't affirm what you want to believe it's even labeled as racist and bigoted 
uh, logic and rational thinking on some act. Quite commonly, I've heard that within academic circles. And finally, the last one was uh, lifetime monogamous uh, marriage. And now, as I said, it's called different things in different cultures, but these lifetime monogamous uh, relationships that we in our culture call marriage, that disintegrates into serial monogamy and then eventually just basically polyamory. And again, our culture has collapsed, not collapsed, has gone down the road in a remarkable way. These are the three pre-indicators that the tipping point has been crossed. These three things have happened. And then he found that every culture, no exception, collapses within 100 years once the tipping point is crossed. And those are the three markers that ensure that, yes, it's happened. And it's irreversible. Okay. So society's on the way to collapsing. What mm -hmm. does that look like? Like, tell, tell me about the Romans and the Greeks. When their society collapsed, what did that look like? Well, um, it's, it's basically one of two things, major categories, and Unwin goes into this in a lot more detail. One is, is that it could be taken over by another culture that is more, he would call it vigorous, that's more highly disciplined, um, has a higher moral standard when it comes to sexuality. So there's this general, uh, that we call that an invasion, a conquering, so to speak. Or it can, like... Um, for example, today, there are some cultures in the world today that are substantially uh, more strict, more disciplined than North American culture. And uh, so we can look forward to within 100 years of possibly being taken over by a more disciplined culture that has higher sexual standards than what we have today. Now, I know that sexual morality and sexual constraints is going downhill all across the world right now. I just read an article, for example, I, I thought China was, was more, um, and, and they still do have more constraints than we do, but even that there's been a major turnaround or change beginning to happen within the last number of years in China. So who knows where it's going now? That's one way it can go invasion, or it's just a total collapse of the infrastructure. Everything goes south. For example, in our civilization, uh, the work ethic is going seriously downhill. People feel more entitled to get more for less work. And uh, that only works for so long until you can't maintain your, your food supply systems, your energy supply systems. Uh, they start breaking down. There's not enough people around to fix them anymore. And some, sometimes that can go downhill real fast. And mental health. Mental health is a major indicator that we're well on our way. And so you would see just in general uh, a serious uptick in people who have mental health challenges. And that's exactly what we're seeing, seeing again today. 